So Satyapreet Singh is a master's student in the Department of Electronic Systems Engineering at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. She is working on the development of artificial intelligence enabled MM wave radar systems targeted towards human activity and just a classification in neuronics lab under the guidance of Dr. Chetan Singh Thakur. She has an industrial experience of eight years and her current academic interests include machine learning, radar signal processing and embedded systems. Over to you, Chetan Singh. Good morning all. So today I present our work Tiny Radar as a fitness tracker, which is a radar based contactless activity tracker for edge computing. My name is Satyapit Singh Yadav and this work has been done under the supervision of Dr. Chetan Singh Thakur, Neuronics Lab, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. So fitness trackers are devices that collect data from your body and they keep track of your progress. They help you in setting achievable goals and monitor your health. So now most of the common fitness trackers which are available in the market are either wearable or camera based. They provide you with excellent features, but the main features that we are looking over here is privacy preservation. Now there has been a lot of news in the media that occasionally there is a mass leakage of fitness tracking data from your Fitbit and Apple devices. And that happens mostly because of the connectivity that it provides to the social media platforms. Also, when it comes to the camera based trackers, we see that they use complex algorithms to hide or mask the face of the user. So we introduced tiny radar as a fitness tracker targeted towards indoor setting. It comprises of two modules. One is IWR1843 MFV radar board, which acts as a sensing and processing modality and a ESP32 module for wireless data transmission over BLE. Tiny Radar can classify eight exercise types and the repetition counts. The excellent features that Tiny Radar comes with is contactless sensing. It is a completely contactless sensing solution. It inherently preserves the privacy of the user by providing point cloud data. It provides your real time data by onboard signal processing, which has been achievable because of the presence of DSP, Cortex R4F, as well as hardware accelerator, which are present inside a single chip on the IWR1843 radar board. This unit is really lightweight and easily portable. IWR1843 radar board sends a chirp through one TX antenna. Now this chirp gets reflected through the target environment and is received by the four receive antennas, which are later mixed with a transmit replica to generate IF signals, which is later digitized using an onboard ADC. This digitized data is later used by the processing module, which is present on the R4F as well as the DSP to generate velocity time maps, which are used for classif classifying the exercise as well as to measure the repetition counts. The identified exercise class as well as the respective repetition count is sent via UART interface to ASP32 module. This transfers the data to a mobile application via BLE. We created our own data set comprising of eight exercise types that is crossover toe touch, crunches, jogging, lateral squats, lunges, hand rotation, squats and rest. You can see the velocity time as for each exercise type on the right hand side. The IWR MMW radar board was configured to have a range resolution of 4 cm and a very high velocity resolution of 6 cm per second. This provided us with high resolution VT maps. In order to collect the data, we took data from 10 people for all the eight exercises in two sessions of 2.5 minutes each. So post data, post data cleaning, we could generate 4,461 VT maps, each of size 64 cross 64. In order to generate the velocity time maps on board, the data from the ADC buffer is transferred to the hardware accelerator for range processing. Once the range has been processed for all the chirps in a frame, we get a radar cube data inside the L3 RAM memory of the radar board. It is followed by static letter removal where the reflections from the static objects are removed. It is followed by Doppler FFT to extract the velocity information present in the target environment. In order to increase the SNR of the system, the velocity information across all the receive antennas are incoherently added. After the range processing and velocity processing, P 
we get a range velocity map inside the L3 RAM. Since we are not interested in the range information, we incoherently add the range bins to get one single velocity column, which are appended for 64 frames to get one VT map. The generated VT map is fed to a three-layered CNN architecture, which is an 8-bit quantized CNN architecture deployed on Cortex-R4F for exercise classification. To train this CNN, we use those 4461 VT maps from 10 different human subjects. We divided into 82% training and 18% validation dataset. Post-training, we obtained 1.49 kilobytes of trainable parameters, which were later quantized to 8-bit and then deployed on Cortex R4F board using CMC's and APIs. We derived a one-dimensional envelope from the VT maps of the exercise and performed FFT on it to compute the repetition counts. The CNN model was quite lightweight and was deployed on Cortex R4F. It comprised of 1.46 kilobytes of trainable parameters, had a latency of 69 milliseconds, and gave a total accuracy of 97%. The repetition counting algorithm was deployed on DSP with only 40 kilobytes of memory utilization, had a latency of approximately 4 milliseconds, and had an average accuracy of 96%. The CNN was quite lightweight and it occupied only 5.76% of the total available RAM present on Cortex R4F. To conclude, Tiny Radar is a contactless, edge enabled, real time fitness tracker suitable for indoor environment where the results are instantly available on your mobile application app via BLE. It has an excellent classification accuracy of 97% and accounting accuracy of 96%. This architecture in future can be scaled to classify more activities like fall detection, particularly in the case of patients who are suffering from dementia and Alzheimer. Before I conclude, I would like to thank the contributors, Ms. Radha Karwal, Mr. Kola Bharat, Mr. Sandeep Rao, and Dr. Chetan Singh Thakur for their valuable contribution towards this project. We have published this work in the IEEE SCAS 2022 conference. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that video. It was very interesting. Such a brief. Uh, so, just wanted to ask you a quick question myself, right? Uh, how long did it take, like, for the, building this application, and what is what are the next steps you're planning to implement into this? So, it took us around three to four months of time to develop the whole chain onto the radar board. So the major challenge was deploying the complete signal processing as well as the classification engine in a quantized format on the radar board and make it really hardware efficient. So in future, we are trying to scale it up in the sense that in the number of exercises that the radar can classify and also do something very similar to what your Fitbit and Apple things do, but using radar. So we are also targeting towards heart rate measurements and some other similar applications. Awesome. We have uh, a question from Murali Dharan uh, Chennakrishnan. Does this work only for the exercise or any activity? So right now it is only for exercise, but yes, because the architecture is scalable. So if you have a data set using which you can classify other activities also, then yes, it can be scaled for identifying other activities. Thank you, Suchipreet. And then we have another question from Chaitanya Iwala. How, how much time it will take to classify an exercise? So initially for the first exercise that the radar captures, it takes approximately 69 milliseconds. But then later on, we are using a sliding window approach. So if we have an overlap of say 10%, then that number goes down. So we are uh, successive frames, we are able to classify in four to five milliseconds of time. And we have another question from Murli Tharan Chennakrishnan. How does this would work um, for target persons more than one, right? Like if it's in a crowd. Yes. Yeah. So this is an excellent question. So basically, um, what happens is because we are collapsing the range bins, we are only able to do it for one person at this particular point of time. But that particular signal processing chain, if it, if if it can be changed, and then if we are able to identify how many number of peaks are there in the range pins, then we can separate out their velocity uh, information, and then we can scale it up for more number of people. Yes, but that is the work which is yet to be done. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sachipreet Singh. 
Um, thank you for your responses and wonderful video presentation. Thank you. And Good. Um, once again, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Tiny uh, Edge Impulse, um, one of the leading uh, what's called platforms for Edge ML and, and using Tiny ML applications. Our executive sponsors, Qualcomm, who have advanced AI research to making efficient AI ubiquitous, uh, both hardware and software. Uh, Sintiet, uh, accelerating your edge compute. Platinum sponsors, DeepLight, uh, fastest video analytics solutions on ARM CPUs. Uh, Kil Kilkatech, um, Global IoT Solutions, Renesas, uh, basically big ideas for every space, the Sony Semiconductor Solutions Corporation, Gold Sponsors, Analog Devices, um, Arm, uh, who also have their own talks, so please feel free to sponsor them and jump onto their line as well. Photohub, making over-the-air firmware and model updates simple and accessible. Uh, that's probably one of the key things we moving forward, so have a look at uh, Photohub. Microsoft uh, for their edge uh, capabilities and technologies, including all their, uh, I guess, Azure services to support TinyML. Um, NXP, uh, together accelerating breakthroughs that advance our world, a, a great hardware provider. Uh, SenseML, analytics toolkit suite to be able to do your AutoML capabilities. STM Microelectronics to provide extensive solutions to make uh, machine learning easy. Um, synaptics, um, engineering exceptional experiences, and then uh, a list of uh, silver sponsors, including AIZIP, Aon Devices, EMSA, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity Inc., IBM, Imagimob, Etermis, uh, Nota AI, OctoML, Prophecy, Quixo, Rexon, SAP, Silicon Labs, Stream Analyze, TDK and in Vincent, TDK and Vincent. So uh, thank you once again for attending. Um, I hope uh, to see you tomorrow online to again to listen to some of those interesting um, presentations. Um, and uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, see you soon.